right, welcome, welcome. Episode five. Um, basically, this is the story of how Yana just today turned down a five hundred thousand dollar a year starting contract, excluding commissions, with some guy. Anyway, take it away. Way to make it sound super shady with some guy. Um, oh, this... Yana, yeah, I'll tell you how it's not shady. Yeah. So, a little bit of backstory, like. I, through and through, believe in mentorship. Like, that's that's the reason why I believe Caleb and I have done so well in our first year of business together. And In the past year, we've spent over $200,000 in, men- in mentorship to put our business, get our business to the point that it is at now. And that's not saying that you have to do that, but we've decided to do that because it was right for our goals because we got goals that are bigger than $200,000 a year. And we're on track to doing a million dollars a year as a minimum. And then yeah. more. So. Yeah. So, like, you know, mentorship is, it's, it's like, okay, you have a holiday um, and you want to go there and maybe it's overseas. It's like mentorship is taking the jet as opposed to the boat. Like, okay, rowing your own boat there is probably the equivalent of doing it yourself. So you can still get there a hundred percent, but it's about the speed at which you do it and um, how long it takes you. All right. And we're back because the battery died and we had to switch it out anyway. Um, so where was our mentorship? Right. So we got mentorship for our coaching business. And then through that, I kind of use the exact same strategies for the service business that I'm running with my brother, which um, is the one that's doing super well in its first month. And, um, you know, that one, I'm like, cool, we have... Oh, okay. So so it's a service-based business in the cleaning industry. And pretty much in the first month, we have been able to secure a contract for 400k a year minimum. It was like 450k, I'm pretty sure. And we are getting like leads left, right and center because I've gone into it with the strategy of pretty much focusing on relationships and like super stoked with where it's at obviously it's a lot of hard work and for us like there was a little bit of luck involved in the sense of how we got our first contract or the opportunity for the first contract but yeah it was definitely like everything I learned from mentoring I was like cool how do we how do we find clients how do we service clients how do we make it an extraordinary experience for them and you know so that was pretty cool to see that pay off so quickly in in my other business and the third business I do is real estate um and so that one I'd been dabbling in like for the last year by myself really and just having fun with it seeing where I can take it and in the last month I kind of just went whoa like I'm actually doing quite well. Like when when we looked at it subjectively, like objectively, we're doing quite well. And like, what if what what could the potential be if I instead of treating it like a hobby, I actually started treating it like a business that I wanted to scale and grow to like you know like multiple eight, nine, ten figures, whatever that looks like. How well so, is well, by the way? how, how well, well is, is well so that we can look back on this in future as well. Uh, well, to give you context, like in the last month, probably 80, 90 K came from our real estate business, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. If I do say so myself anyway, um, (laughs) so (laughs) that one was started out as purely hobby and, um, we fell into it and it started off like, you know, like actually making $800 a week straight away from it, which, you know, we, I expected maybe four or 500, but yeah, we started off on the right foot and then it's just grown from there. And, um, pretty much that's how I got here. And, and then last month I kind of just went, well, what's stopping me from taking this seriously and going all the way? Nothing. Like we settled in and I pretty much just went, right, it's go time. So I've been on the hunt for like a mentor or someone to help guide me through because I'm very new to the real estate industry. Like We new to the game. Yeah, we new to the game. Um, so I've been searching, talking to people and just getting my feelers out because for me right now, mentorship isn't a need because I know I can figure it out myself. It's more so wanting that and desiring that support whenever I need, whenever I want pretty much. Um, so I've talked to a few people and um, this morning... Actually, I got, there were quite a few business opportunities um, that have come and go in the last month. Um, 
yeah, come and gone in the last month. Um, not all amicable, but that's a story for another time. Oh, yeah. um, but this, there was one guy that I spoke to today. And long story short, because this will be a very long story and like the ins and outs, I don't know how much he'll appreciate me sharing everything that he's told me. Um, but pretty much he asked me to come and work for him if I... Like and, and he would pay me a starting salary of 500k a year as long as I was a, uh, willing to give up my business and like wanting to start a business, um, which kind of makes sense because it's like, you know, I'd be in direct competition with him. But like, yeah, so that was the offer doing 500k a year commissions, um, like plus commissions and so not including commissions. And um, he was like, yeah, like if you're keen, let's do it. And I pretty much said no because my rationale was why would I say yes to 500k when I know I could be making like 10 million or like 100 million um, in a couple of years and what I was looking for was mentorship not a job Um, and that's pretty much what I told him and um, he was like fair enough and we kind of just left on we left on good terms, like, there was no bad blood, because I explained where I was coming from, and I told him, like, I've got time to wait out the industry, and to, well, not wait out the industry, but to play, um, play around with it, see what works for me personally, and just go all in, um, and if it's not with him, like, I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for me to learn from other big giants in the industry, so that was my story, and (laughs) funny thing is, I posted it on my, Instagram because I actually told my own coach and mentor about it before I told Caleb because um, the call was this morning and then I had a full day of training like for my certification that I'm doing right now and um, like 500k is a lot of money and I and like I won't say I won't sit here and go that's nothing like that is a substantial amount of money and when I said no, I actually like freaked out and panicked a little bit. And I was like, did I actually just like say no to half a million dollars? Um, and I panicked a little bit, but I didn't have time to like go back on my word or like try and convince myself out of it, out of the decision I made, which was a no, because I had the full day. So then I, when I did, I jumped into WhatsApp with my mentors because, you know, like it's a big thing and I just wanted to like share how I was feeling about it and um, just process what I was feeling before I changed my mind if I did. And then like long story short, that ended up on Instagram and then we were just debriefing for the day today because we hadn't talked to each other literally all day and it's like 9 p.m., almost 9 p.m. So yeah, so like we were just debriefing and then he we actually didn't even start on that. He was talking about his day and then he went and scrolled on Instagram and like, and it was like, he read my story and he was like, 500K? I didn't see like, that. Like, oh, what what did you see? I just saw when you were saying big business opportunities and then oh, I was like, oh, what did you do today? Yeah, yeah. So he read that and he was like, what did you do today? And then I sat down, debriefed him, talked to him about the conversation and then, and then he was like, um... And because he was silent for a little while. So I was like, are you okay with the decision? Like being like, oh my goodness, did I make the wrong decision? And he was like, no, like 100%, I agree with you and all of that. And then he was like, do you want to be on my podcast? And I was like, yeah. And then now here we are. And he's about to read the story. That's why I'm speeding up. Oh, so you don't need to speed up. But basically the thing was like, just Yana on her story saying so many shifts in life. No joke, because she did just say this to me on Sunday. She was saying, I feel like we're about to go through another huge shift another yeah. level up in our business i remember grabbing my stomach and i was like caleb like this feeling inside of me like it feels like we're about to like go through a massive growth and like level up and as cringy as that sounds but that was you know like it is taking things to a whole new level and i was just like like i can feel it yeah yeah and that, that was basically the story so it said a little bit more stuff about how it's the same thing as like when a year ago we were deciding to actually start up our business and then take things fully online with my coaching um, or just our coaching, that side of things, um, for the health and fitness side of things. And we did that in April this year. Um, so we quit doing any face-to-face quit, stuff. 
year or quit a gym. Yeah. Like we've got our yeah. little garage just because I genuinely enjoy it. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that was pretty cool. And I feel like there was um, a great thing that you were talking about there that there's there's a lot of um, a lot a lot of value in what you were saying or a lot of truth in what you're saying where the guy that you were talking to, not in a disparaging way, but was basically saying you need to be more realistic with your expectations. Mm -hmm. Like, mm, you know, a million dollars a year, multi-million dollars a year, you know, you should be realistic with your expectations. And what did you say to that? I was like, I've never been realistic with my, like, with my business expectations, with how fast things would grow and, like, look at me a year on. Like, people would say what we've done in a year isn't realistic, but that's because I know that I'm, like, I'm just a superhuman. Nah, like, I just know that, you she know, is. you can, if you set your mind to it and you, like, you just dream big, like, what's the harm in just allowing yourself to believe in crazy things happening for you and, like, crazy good things happening for you? Like, and so I kind of ran with that and I told him, I was like, I've never been realistic and I truly believe that's why I've done so well and will continue to do so with or without you um, not being cocky but it's like he's not the only one who's doing well in the real estate industry and like I just didn't maybe it was a wound on my part but I just didn't appreciate being told like like oh I'm not saying that you can't do it but you need to be more realistic and like for me I never said I want to make a million dollars in the first year or I never put a timeline I just know I'm going to get there and that it's going to happen for me and I just don't want to be around people or be supported by people who I guess wants to put a cap or a limit on what I can achieve in my potential um, because you know like we are our worst enemy sometimes and we have those doubts in our head about whether or not we are capable and your support network is meant to be the ones that uplift you and believe in you and if you don't have that then like there's no point having them around for business wise like not saying you should just go and cut out your dad because he said something about your business like no that's not what I'm saying but you have to be selective about what <laughs> you have to be selective about what you take on from people and if like okay. if the advice they give yeah. is actually advice you should take on and listen to yeah. didn't we kind of cut your dad out for a little bit because of that or like we moved out of their house yeah but that's we a never story for another time yeah we but we never stopped talking to yeah, him true. And, yeah yeah sorry <laughs> just exposing me no I'm just kidding <laughs> I just um, thought it was a funny thing like well I thought of my dad because I'm like okay I know that I can't talk business with him because I know what his stance and his views are but like I'll go and have dinner with him or I'll go and like we'll, we'll go out and we'll all have dinner together pretty much dinner is all we do um and we're spending Christmas with him like there's no bad blood like there's no hate between me and the human that is my dad <laughs> Um, but I just know that his opinions in business, his opinions on what I should do with my career, like I'm just not open to his input or what he thinks I should do. As harsh as that sounds, you need to protect your dreams at all costs. Yeah, because the people that you surround yourself are very important for that kind of thing. So it, like, if you're going down the same kind of journey as we are, I think that it's absolutely essential sometimes to... Well, it's absolutely essential, first and foremost, to protect yourself and be intentional with who you allow yourself to be surrounded with, which does include from time to time cutting people out of your life to a degree or completely, um, or that degree is completely. Um, so I just think it's, yeah, it's necessary because who you surround yourself is huge because another thing like is are you going to surround yourself with people who are also really insecure? Another thing that um, Yana was telling me about this dude that she spoke with today was that he was like, I wouldn't give any away any of my secrets for free. I wouldn't give away any of my secrets for free um, unless you were mentoring with me, unless you were being coached by me. And but working I, for me. Yeah, much. working for him. I actually think that's a very short-sighted way of doing things because all of that information is out there and it can be found. So it's like the value, it's like your security is in just purely your information, not who you are as a person. So by hiding that from people, um, I think that you're devaluing yourself essentially and being like, I a lot of my value comes from just 
my knowledge and the things that are not my ability to actually coach people, to implement them, to lead them and help them. Because I actually think, like I've talked about before, that's where the majority of your value comes from as a coach, as a mentor, not necessarily just in the information, but your specific ability to distill that information to an individual or whoever you're, to your mentees essentially at the right time in the right way. That is where your value is, not just purely in the information because all the information is out there. So yeah. But for context, like I didn't go into the call being like, give me your strategy. I asked for mentorship and then as soon as like my intention with wanting to start a business became clear, it was very much like I would not do that because I would be creating competition for myself and these are my secrets and I, I need to have, like, I need to keep these close. That's and, what the guy was saying. Yeah, so, so that was was like you know just didn't really vibe with me because I feel like we're both very open with how we got to where we are like sharing strategies and all of that and like the the thing behind that is like we share stuff that we know works we know of a hundred other strategies or we could know of a thousand other strategies but we're not going to share all of those because we haven't actually tested them and whatever we say like we actually want to be able to stand behind them and that for me was just really important because that's what we want to do we want to elevate the industry we want to change the world and like we're not going to do that by gatekeeping or like saying oh you can only do this if you work for me like maybe we'll change our mind in a few years but I just feel like you know it's if the basis for someone coming to work with you is because they couldn't have had a business without you just doesn't sit right with me yeah and like I was saying before that does feed into what I was saying where your value your value in business and as a coach, any of that isn't in not having competition because competition is always going to exist for whatever you have. The value is you. Um, so whether you're a coach, whether you're any kind of business, you're always going to have competition technically, but it's your choice whether or not you see them as that. You could see them as other people in your field and you can actually all help each other to a degree because it's also like the value of what you bring to the table is you not just your business and not just your information. And I know that might not technically apply to everything and it might be foolish to say that there's no competition. I think to a degree there can be competition, but I, I don't think that you need to not bring others up just purely because of that. And maybe, like Yana said, maybe that's foolish, maybe that's naive. Um, but we'll see. I feel like logically it makes sense um, as well as feels right to us and I think that's huge for making decisions and becoming the kind of people that we want to be and help lead other people to be if they so choose to and another thing is like it's fine if like you want to be paid for your information like and that for mm. me is like paying for access but I don't want to pay or be paid to change who I am so I would happily pay for information, for mentoring, for like, you know, whatever I need strategy, but I refuse to let myself be paid on the premise that I have to change what I want to do and who I am essentially, which is at a core, like, I feel like I'm an entrepreneur and like, I want to run my own business and that's what I do because I've got bigger visions than what I have no idea, to be honest, what he wants to do, but like bigger visions than you know, then what he was offering. Yeah, then what he was offering and like for me I was just willing wasn't willing to compromise that. So Yeah, so know your values, know what you stand for, know what's important for you um like what's important for your goals and like actually getting clear on those goals and pretty much just have blinders on and look at all the opportunities you will be presented in life and oh this is another point today. During the certification someone said you should actually take all the opportunities that life presents to you because you never know what will happen if you don't take it. But I actually believe that you should filter those opportunities through all of the things I listed before and only choose the ones that are actually aligned because time is your most precious thing. You never like most precious resource. You if you invest your time everywhere and like also nowhere at once, like you won't get very far. You have to know which ones are worthwhile investing that time in because yes, you might miss out on more opportunities, but are those opportunities worth more to you than the time that you would have put into the first opportunities in the first place? <laughs> yeah, it's the it's 
it's the quality as opposed to just the quantity because there are going to be very large quantities of opportunities all the time and even like the quality of some of those opportunities might be high but they not, might not be the quality to the degree that you need relative to your goals and your context so on that I feel like something that came to mind is just this phrase that I've heard which is just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting more done just because yeah essentially because you could be doing heaps of things but not really making any progress and that's what happens a lot of the time to a lot of people they're just like oh, I feel like I'm doing this and this and this and this but uh, my business isn't moving forward and when you talk to them about it they're only doing like 10 minutes maybe as, as an example of the things that are going to move their business forward a day or even a week or like an hour of that a week but they feel like well they could be doing like 12 to 18 hour days but it's like it's about being intentional with your time and the opportunities that you have and where you invest your time on those opportunities how you invest your time into those opportunities um yeah i think that's huge and that's going to be so that is something that has continual continuously moved our business forward um and us forward as people because yes there are lots of opportunities Technically, we're missing out on opportunities by not going out clubbing with our mates every weekend, getting smashed and having fun. But what do we want out of life? Is it that? No. So that opportunity is not worth it. But if you were to follow what was said before, technically that's an opportunity we're missing out on. We're also missing out on opportunities by not going around and cleaning houses for like for the extra hour or so that we have a day. But is that worth it for us? The answer is no. Because I'm not disparaging the uh, that line of work because I think it's really important to do. And obviously, we have our boys doing that. Like, that's one of the companies that we have stakes in. Um, but it's it's not worth it for us necessarily to do it because that's not in alignment with our goals and the things that we want to do. So, yeah, it's a real juicy opportunity. But it's like the more successful you become, the more juicy the opportunities uh, become that you have to say no to as well and that's the difference between someone who continues to move forward and someone who gets stuck a lot of the time or their business fail or their business failing rather um, a lot of the time is the ability to say no to those opportunities if you don't have that ability to say no to the wrong opportunities then you're more likely to get stuck or to fail but if you have the ability to say no to the wrong opportunities and say yes to the right ones, that is going to continuously move you forward alongside with you putting in the work that is required to do so. So just like that, I feel like that's a full circle with um, what we were talking about at the start of this, turning down 500000 to go work for someone else. Is that a big opportunity? Yes, that's a juicy opportunity. Most people don't aren't even able to make that in their life and to think that someone who, like Yana was saying before, she has like 5% of the knowledge that some of this guy was talking about. But even then, the stuff she's figured out, she's telling the guy like, you know, her strategies and like what she's been doing and implementing. And he's like blown away by the progress that she's making. She's too humble to say any of this stuff, but she's blown away. He was blown away. She, she told me before he was blown away by the progress she was making. He's like, man, why aren't my people doing this? Like they're supposed to be geniuses. They're supposed to be leaders in their field. Um, well, because I had a podcast, but I mean, what's this? <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, the opportunity is there and she's fantastic at what she does. She's already figuring out so much herself. But it's like to have someone who has such little experience in it to be offered 500000 straight out the gate is a fantastic opportunity because you also get mentorship from someone. But is it in alignment with what we want? No, because Yana doesn't want to work for someone else um, and kill off her business in order to have that opportunity because it's like, I don't know if you talked about it already, but the cost of that opportunity the cost isn't 500000 because the business, the direction Yana is going to take it, without a doubt, is a $10 million, business, $10 million a year business. So that's not $500,000 a year that that's costing her um, if she doesn't do it. But it's rather, if she does do it, it's costing us, costing her $9.5 million a year. And $10 million is just at least, yeah. Because that it's going to go higher than that and, and become bigger than that. And I have all the faith in the world that Yana can do that because she's an absolute gun. Um, so yeah, it's just like, that's a big opportunity, but a bigger opportunity is 
running the business in the way we want it to, to the scale that we want it to, in the size and magnitude and to have the impact that we want it to. So it's like if we were thinking short term, we could have just taken that job. But we got bigger goals than that. So nothing wrong with taking that job if that's your goal, if that's what you want. Um, but for us, the opportunity wasn't right. For Yana, it wasn't right. And obviously, I backed that decision even though it's after the fact. Um, and it's just like you just got to do what actually is right for you, not just what's easy and what's right in front of you there. Because if you just do that, you're only going to live for the short term and you're only going to be, you know, a few months ahead at a time. All right, now dogs are barking. Yeah. All right. And the final point I wanted to add is like, we talk a lot about money, but that's really just like reflective of the impact that we want to have. And like I said, we want to change the world and I can't change the world through working under someone because my potential and my genius is going to be capped. And yeah, that's just how I feel. Vincent's joined the room. Hello, say what's up. Say what's up. What's good? What's You're good? looking... And the face, ah, the face of the good weeding. Good, good, exactly. What's it called? <laughs> you see what I mean? No, no, say it, say it, say it. What is it? I don't know, I forgot. What is it? Yeah. The Windows and Pressure Washing Proprietary Limited. Also known as HVCO. Yes, that's HVCO. the, that's, well, that's, well that name was unavailable, but that's all right. We're going to buy every other business. Yes. I'm going to buy out those businesses. Anyway, so... Hope this podcast was fun, entertaining, and you got something out of it. Remember, like, this is all just from our experience and what we've gone through. If something doesn't resonate with you, you don't have to listen to it. Just like I don't have to listen to other people's advice. But I genuinely hope, genuinely hope that you found this at least entertaining, right? Like, because this has gone on for almost 40 minutes, so I hope that at least it's entertaining. And But there were 12 before. Were there? Yeah. So, yeah, we hope it's at least been entertaining and that you got some value out of it. And um, have a great day, night, middle of the day, evening, wherever, whatever time it is 1 for PM, you. 1pm, 2pm, 3pm, 4pm. <laughs> yes, that's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being a very real possibility. 11.31pm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're, I need to go have dinner and then go to bed because I've got an early start tomorrow morning. But oh, do you have any too. last words? I'm in final words for this episode, not last words. <laughs> Get good. Nah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>